This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Waldstetten. But before that, this video is brought to you by Todd Templer and Chasey Dog. Thank you for being farm barons. So Waldstetten is a new map to be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for PC only. This is a 4X map. So it is four times the size of a standard Giants base game map. As a result, it is going to be available for PC. We have yet to see a 4X map make its way onto console. Without saying that it can't go onto console, it's just we have yet to see a 4X map make it there. So therefore, as a general rule of thumb, 4X maps are going to be available for PC only. Let's read a little bit of the description. Welcome to Waldstetten, a wonderfully designed somewhere in Germany. This fictitious 4X card awaits you, which was designed with great attention to detail and invites you to linger. This map is perfect for all types of agriculture and forestry in single and multiplayer. In the two villages, you can find many walk-in buildings and functions and decorations. The entire map is seasons ready and therefore will also provide a beautiful backdrop in the winter. For agriculture, there are over that's right, 250 fields for farming as well as six fully equipped farmyards to settle down in. And now the best is what the description says. Waldenstetten is the map for the perfect role play as it simply offers everything from beautifully designed farms and towns to an idyllic hilly landscape with ski area to emergency guards and appropriate activatable missions and construction sites with heaps of earth to evacuate. Now this map has some very, very interesting and quite honestly, very unique aspects. And I am really excited to show this off to you. And if you have not downloaded this map, at a minimum, if you don't even plan on farming on it, if you're one of those guys that holds out and says, I only play American 4X maps that have square fields. Okay. You don't know what you're missing. You need to download this, drive it around, and look at some of these things. They're gimmicks? Yes. Plain and simple, they are gimmicks. But they're pretty dang original gimmicks. And you got to give the map author a little credit for coming up with it. So let's go ahead and load on in. We are going to use additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, and field calculator with our video. Let's go ahead and pull up the log. And while the map loads on in, I will tell you that I loaded this map up in Farm Manager. And when you do that, the main farmyard is exactly how you're going to see it here in new farmer mode. Except none of the doors work until you buy the land. So you do not own the land in any play mode other than new farmer. And you do have to buy the land in order to make use of the buildings and animal areas, as well as oftentimes the production that is on the map. So here we are loaded on in and we are basically in town, in the southern town. Let's go ahead and pull up the PDA and zoom on out. Remember, this is a 4X map, so everything is four times bigger than you would initially think so these fields while they look super tiny and small they are decent sized fields this map does indeed include all of the standard crops available to us in farm sim 22 and if we go ahead and take a look at the lands area you'll see that we start out by owning the main farm right here which is 13.86 acres in size three hundred thirty six thousand dollars to buy field 100 5.92 acres of size, $143,000. Field 98 is $123,918. It is 5.1 acres in size. Now we could buy all of the unbuyable land for a mere $72.5 million, but it does help represent what aspects of the map you can buy and what aspects of the map you cannot 
by. Now, instead of running through a lot of these fields with this screen, I'm going to go over here and make use of the farmland lease screen, which is part of the farmland lease mod. And from here, we're going to be able to see a listing of all of the viable plots of land and how big they are, if they are associated with a field, what field they are associated with, and then the cost to buy that. And it does look like overall, farmlands and the fields are lining up. So that is going to make this a whole lot easier. Now I'm going to go ahead and scroll through this. I'm going to try to do it fairly quickly just because I know this video is going to be an incredibly long video because it is a 4X map and there is a lot going on on this map. There are in fact 20 plus production aspects to this map and we have to buy them all and we're going to have to talk about all of them. There are as the description said 6 different farms and in those different farms there are buildings animal areas and such that we need to talk about also it's going to take a while to drive around this map because there is stuff scattered all over the place i'm not going to show you all of the tips or tricks on this map i do want to leave some of it for you all to explore on your own but i will say that there are a lot of cool areas you can flood the town you can activate fire alarms you can activate buildings to be burning and you have to come and put them out you can activate an interstate wreck that you could role play coming and you know saving the day there are working ski lifts now while you can't ride on the ski lifts you can basically go up the ski lift to the top of the mountain and then get a heck of a view there is just so much going on this map a lot of originality, a lot of thought has gone into this map, and a lot of care has gone into this map. So there you go. Now you can get a little bit of representation of all of the viable fields and how much they are going to cost. We also have then the field calculator. This is going to show us all of the fields and how big each and every one of them are. I'm going to try to scroll through this list a little bit faster. A little hint, if you're watching this video and you want to see aspects of this screen there are two good ways of doing it one you could pause the screen and click it and pause it and click it and pause it but another thing would be if you click the gear you can actually change the playback speed i know some people think i talk incredibly slowly for their ability to understand me so they often have to watch the video at a two times speed or they will go literally insane but what you could do is you could slow the video down to something like a half speed or a quarter speed and then play it and you'll be able to see me scrolling through this list and it'll be a little bit easier to read. This map does have the standard crop calendar and therefore we will have the standard growth stages available to us in Farm Sim 22. And if we take a look at the prices screen, you will see that we do have the ability to sell everything on this map. In fact, we have the ability to sell everything to multiple sell points. Things that we typically cannot sell on most maps, we can sell here on this map. Diesel, you have five places to sell it. Road salt, you have three places that will let you buy it. All of the production points can be sold at multiple areas. We also have additional custom production available on the map. We're gonna go ahead and show that right now. We do have a stone crusher or the ability to sell stones, not so much a stone crusher. We have asphalt, concrete, limestone, gravel, sand, cement, river sand, and stone powder, as well as dirt as additional field types on the map. Take a look at our starting equipment. We start out with everything that is fairly well maintained other than the bucket and this front loader. All of it is owned, none of it is leased. We do have a large cow shed at the main farm in new farmer mode. We do not have any cows at the start. We do have contracts available on this map, and we do not start out by own, owning any of the production. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Fent Favorite 515C, the John Deere 6250R. We have the Nova 330 Harvester. That is paired up with the PowerStream 500 Harvester header. We have the Schaefer 2630 Front Loader. That is then paired up with the Universal Bucket. We have two electric forklifts. They're not at the main farm. One is over at the shop. The other is over at the firehouse. And we can go inside the firehouse and we can do some pretty cool things with the firehouse. We're going to try to show that off here also. We also have a pair of Brantner, Brantner trailers, the DD24073 slash 2XL. And as you can see, they are also set up to hold the new build types that are available on the map. We have the Amazon KG3001 Super Power Harrow, and then the Amazon 3000 Super Cedar. Then that is going to close out all of our starting equipment. Now, instead of jumping immediately to the main farm, I just want to walk around town here a little bit because, well, I want to show you, you're going to find things like this scattered around the map, little icons. Now, this one is going to switch on the siren. I suggest you turn down your volume right about now. So I have turned on the siren. And we can leave that running. We can go inside this building here. And then from in here, we can literally go inside these offices. Lots of buildings in town have the ability to go inside of these offices. Go upstairs. Let me go down here and turn this thing off. You kind of get to just... There, turn that off. Like I said, if you only download, download, oh my gosh, if you only download this map to explore it, then please do, because, I mean, everything is just so well thought out, so well detailed. Would you like to take an elevator ride? Well, we can. We can go on an elevator ride over at the, um, the hospital. Now, I'm looking for... And bear with me for a minute. Here it is. Alright. I'm gonna turn on the fire alarm again. Turn down your volume. Oh my gosh, it's on fire. Let's evacuate the building, everybody. Let's evacuate the building. All right, let's turn that off. Cool little details. Is it farming? No. Is it neat? Yeah, it is. Is it a gimmick? Yeah, it is. But it's a pretty dang cool gimmick. I do have to say so. All right, that, let's go ahead and I'm just going to have down to the main farm that is up there, field 98, field 100, that is toward the middle of the map. If you cannot open any of these doors, then you probably do not own the land. Go ahead and buy the land and then everything should work for you. So here we are at our main farm. We have our harvester. With respect to can we customize the farms? We can, and I have looked at most of the six farms available on this map and I do have to say that while you can delete some of the buildings you can't necessarily sell everything that is on the farm so I would have to say this map is going to get a half of a point ultimately with respect to can you customize the farm because while we can sell some of the things we can't really sell everything Check this out. We've got a little farm shop here on our farm. A 
Well, that's not a door. We have a little bit of a cell point right here on our farm. There we have the name of our farm. We have a custom cow area here. So we have our slurry point. Now I do want to leave the F1 menu up because there's a few little interesting tidbits about these buildings. All right, so right there, that is the animal trigger, but R is going to turn on and off the lights. So I thought, well, we have some sort of overlapping trigger here, right? Let me try to move around and try to figure out where the animal buy trigger is located versus the light trigger. Well, the problem I have is the animal buy trigger is over here. Not really close to, in my opinion, the actual icon, which is over here. So I'd like to see this moved over here in a map update to accur accurately represent where the actual buy icon is. So we have 80 cows in this particular building and we cannot open this door. Oh, sorry, we could. We have to get right up to the door. I think the way it's designed is you're supposed to be able to open and close the door from the inside, not so much the outside because you have to get right up against the door. So here we have our straw trigger and our food trough. We have our milk trigger around the other side. Finder milk trigger is located right inside here. Most of these doors will work. I mean, this a lot of these buildings are incredibly well detailed. So front loader. We have our farm silo, so we have our fill pipe and our dump station. We have a pair of silage bunkers down here. But you notice we do not have any silage triggers coming up, so we're not seeing chaff and a percent. So while these look like silage bunkers, they are not. I don't know if that is necessarily a mistake or what is going on there. Maybe they're intended for you to just tip root crops into. But we do have a cow farm here. So typically cow farms are going to include silage areas. And that is the main farm. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to play the lottery. We're going to win $10 million. I'm going to buy every plot of land on the map because only after we do that are we going to see where the production items are located and where all of the other playable farms are located. All right, now that we have bought all of the farmlands, you're going to notice we have a bit more icons down there on the mini-map. So let's go ahead and pull that up. A little sneak peek. You can see that we now have a bunch of production, but we're going to go into that here in a little bit. So here we are at the main farm. This is the starting farm, but we also have a farm over here, large cow shed. We have another farm located right here. An arable farm. Here we have a cow farm located right there. So that is one, two, three, four. We have another farm located down here. So that's five. Then we have a pig farm over here. So that is six. We also have two biogas plants on the map. They are located right here, a biogas plant. 
And then the next biogas plant is trying to remember. Well, I think we're going to find it when we get around to the fly around, so don't worry too much about that. There is a massive area of production right here to the north of the farm, just beside field 173. And down here, we have most of our production aspects. We have a farm silo. We have a liquid manure tank. We have liquid fertilizer production, fertilizer storage tank. We have a mixed feed production fertilizer production, composter, which is going to be making silage. We have fuel. We have a methane pump. We have plant product protection, so herbicide, seed production, pig feed production. And that should be about it. So let's jump down here to our production screens and just iterate through some of this production. So we have the one megawatt biogas plant. This is just going to be a standard biogas plant. We have lime production where we are going to require 2,000 units of stone, 5,000 units of water. It's going to make 4,000 units of lime. Then we have a limestone production, which is 2,000 units of stone. It's going to make 1,000 units of limestone and 1,000 units of gravel. We have a cement plant where we're going to need to bring gravel, sand, lime, and water. And that is going to make stone powder and cement. We have our mixed feed production, where we have the ability to bring hay, straw, silage, and mineral feed. And that is going to make, then, total mixed rations. Or we can make mineral feed by bringing barley, sunflowers, sugar beet, and lime, and get some mineral feed out of that. We have the ability to make liquid fertilizer with water and solid fertilizer, or we can make liquid fertilizer with water, manure, and lime. We have the ability to make solid fertilizer with manure and slurry, as well as manure and digestate. Pig food, we've got a couple options. We have potatoes, corn, wheat, and canola, or we could go with smaller amount of potatoes, a larger amount of corn, wheat, and canola. We could go with small amount of potatoes, large amount of sorghum, wheat, and canola, or sugar beets, sorghum, wheat, and canola. As far as seed production goes, we have a thousand liters or units of wheat to 200 units of solid fertilizer. We have a thousand units of barley to solid fertilizer, or a thousand units of corn to solid fertilizer to get seed. Composter, you can see that we are going to be taking. Various inputs plus diesel to make compost. So we have hay plus diesel, grass plus diesel, manure plus diesel, wood chips plus diesel, chaff, straw, round grass bales, which is different than just bringing loose grass, round hay bales, and square bales. I'm not sure if it's any square bale if it's square straw bales, or what that is. Kind of interesting. Herbicide production, we have 500 units of water, 500 units of diesel, and 500 units of slurry to make 1,500 units of herbicide, or 500 water, 500 diesel, and 500 manure to get herbicide. We have a 99 kilowatt biogas plant, and then we have a just traditional medium greenhouse. That is all of the production that is available on the map. And with that, let's go ahead and get set up for our fly around. We're gonna fly around a map and take a look at a lot of interesting things on the map. We're going to try to identify the various farms as well as cell points and production areas. This map has 21 production areas on the map. We have a sawmill, we have two biogas plants, we have carpentry, oil, sugar, dairy, grape processing, a spinnery, a bakery, a tailor, Fertilizer production, liquid fur production, a composter, TMR production, plant protection production, so herb or some herbicide, yeah. Seed production, pig feed production, lime production, cement production, and the medium greenhouse. The 
Let's get a little bit of attitude, and we are basically looking due south at this point. Toward the town for which we started out in. I think that's good enough. Let's go ahead and just slowly rotate. And while we are slowly rotating, we can talk about a little bit of the scoring system. So clearly with 21 production, we are going to give the map a full point with respect to having production available or pace places set aside for such. We're going to give the map a full point with regard to having the ability to sell all of the base game props, animal outputs, and production points. We are going to give the map just a half a point with respect to the farms being customizable because with respect to this farm down here, while we can sell all the buildings, the non-functional silage bunkers will not go away. And that is kind of one of the best case scenarios for the various farms on the map. There's other farms that have a large amount of decorative elements that do not go away. Now we are basically looking off to the town that is up to the north. A lot of cool things going on up there as well as production points. One of the biogas plants is directly across from us right there. Up in the woods, we haven't talked about this, but up in the woods, there is a rundown farmhouse. So if you wanted to play this map and basically be one of those, you know, hermit players or really start from scratch, start from nothing and work your way up, you could start living up there and just kind of living by the scraps, and then kind of working your way up into land ownership and the like. Go ahead and just kind of fly down here. This is the town that we can flood. And I want to show you that real quick. This town also has a hospital that you can go into. And the hospital rooms are equipped with hospital beds and such. And we even have a working elevator or multiple working elevators here at the hospital. I think it's something that you should probably download the map and explore. You can see that we do have decorated hospital rooms on the second floor. Let's just go kind of ahead and walk on into the hospital. We have our receptionist area. Here we have kind of like some Hospital rooms, maybe emergency rooms. Oh, we got some restrooms. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Oh, thank goodness we don't have the ability to flush. We have an elevator. Oh, now we're up on the second floor. Set off the fire alarm. I don't think we necessarily want to do that again. Let's call it the elevator. Or you know what? We could be impatient and go up the steps. Right? And now we're out on the roof. We have a helicopter landing pad, so if you are playing role play and you actually have a helicopter, then you could fly some uh, accident patients in here into the uh, into the hospital. Really cool. Really neat ideas. Let's see, lots are going on. If you look around, you might see various triggers to activate.
There we have kind of a office building, town center type complex. This is where we were at when we activated that fire alarm. This is where we spawned in at here at the church. Oh, looky here. Oh no! In a car accident. What's this one do? Uh oh! Oh my gosh! The fire department needs to come and put out this fire before the whole place blows. Oh! Thank goodness we turned that off. We're not gonna hit all these, but. Why not have a little Oh! Oh uh oh uh oh. Sporting goods shop is it's going up in flames. Bad things are happening. Let's quickly split it out. Okay. Last little gimmick I wanna show you is over here. So this is the firehouse. So one thing that we can do is here is our modded forklift. So you see we have some railings. We come up here, we can click this and we can turn the railings off. At least I could earlier. At any rate, won't worry about that because what I want to show you is over here. activated our mission turn on a siren there but oh my gosh the whole town is flooded we've just flooded the entire town what are we gonna do what are we gonna do we just flooded the entire town well we're gonna save the day is what we're gonna do oops This is really cool. Oh, we have a projector. That's projecting the Windows desktop on the screen. Really cool, really cool. Oh, thank goodness we have saved the day. Good for us. Go ahead and make our way over here to one of the other playable farms. I'll leave it up to you all to find some of these other little fun gimmicks. I won't activate the accident up on the interstate. I'll let you all find that. So here we have another one of the playable farms. We do have an off the map train cell point is kind of where we are headed right now we look across the map this map is just absolutely stellar stunning in every way now overall the game has performed fairly well on this map i have noticed a few little stutters here and there uh but that has been when i have been kind of down in the town here we have fuel point and Mick Fush Fushai. And we can go into Mick Fushai if we wanted to and take a look around. I just want to make my way over here. Another little residential area. A 
other kind of office complex. There's just so much. I can't show you everything. You're going to have to really download this and experience it yourself. Lots of buildings like this just kind of hanging around that you can enter into and kind of make use of. Like I say, the map is really set up for all types of various role play. And then we dive on in here to the mine. And this is where you're going to start scooping out some of these raw materials and delivering them to the various cement and limestone plants. So here we have gravel that you can scoop out. I do not believe you need to use the Terra Farm mod in order to do the mining because we do have kind of heaps set up here. I suppose you could possibly use the Terra Farm and configure it to dig out other products I haven't tried. We have our lime plant located right here. So we have our input dump station for our stones. We have our water dump station right there. And then our lime is going to pile up here. This is our cement plant. And we have our dump station for our water. We have our, another dump station. Go ahead and kind of get it up out of here. Over here, we're coming to one of the ski lifts. Really interesting detail on this ski lift. I want to show it to you. We have our parking lot. Around, we have lizard goods with various skis. Then we have our lift. We have the gondolas coming down. Going in, and then they're going to come out. This is going to take us up on top of the mountain. We have our ski runs. Right here, because we have our snow machines. We have a ski run looking down up above the city. Kind of a lodge up here on top of the mountain. A little camp area in the summertime. Then we have a small ski lift. Probably over here, a little chairlift coming down. Now, inside of this town, we have a couple different construction areas that we also have raw materials in. We have our spinnery, we have our animal dealer. We have a bakery in town. A couple other production items going on here. You see here we have some construction. We can drive down in there and there is some... I assume some things we can do down here. We have some... Gravel. Stone. Something down here piled up. More construction sites, again, for you to excavate and gain some raw materials. Lots of cool little areas in this town in order to activate building fires, activate accidents, or other things like that.
directly in front of us, we have another one of the playable cow farms. We have one of our biogas plants. Remember, we had to buy all of this land. Until we bought the land, we didn't see the triggers for the production areas. We didn't own the production areas. And we didn't see the other playable farms until we actually bought the land also. So now we're coming over here to the kind of the forested area because I wanted to show you this rundown barn and farmhouse. That you could do a little bit of role play yourself with. If we come on in here, you can see we have two icons. Typically, one is the wardrobe and one is sleep, but the only the sleep icon is coming up. I don't know if the triggers are duplicated, and that's why we have two duplicate icons there, or if they are simply overlapping, and that's why we can't get to the wardrobe trigger. There I see the telltale dome of the other biogas plant down there by field 71. We have a grain cell point there. And sorry, over here by field 39, we have the biogas plant. And this is also the pig farm. So that's why I couldn't find the biogas plant last time. I forgot that it was tied and associated with the pig farm. It's also where we're going to find our medium greenhouse. Then we have a power plant and some other just general decorative stuff going on. But now we're going to fly back. Our farm shop is over here. This is where we are going to kind of conclude our aerial tour of the map. And we are going to then settle down here at the shop and get into our Mahindra and do the drive around and check out more of this really, really wonderful map. So the farm shop is right here behind the hospital. Okay, right here. We have our shop trigger right here. Let's go ahead and get our Mahindra, like I said. We'll also then be able to see where the vehicles spawn in at and how big of an area we have for those vehicles to spawn. Here we have our spawn location. The big question is how far over will this happen and will we be able to get two rows or very likely just a single row so thank you we may have a little bit of trouble in getting a lot of machinery spawn in here and then of course we do have a gate to contend with as far as getting out of here so that is really going to be the limiting factor as to how big of machinery can you really buy here at the at the shop and get out of the shop and then take it down the roads because the roads overall are not super wide I would say they're not overly narrow but we do have utility poles light poles at the edge of the field roads and they do have collisions on them We have our customizer parasol and trade trigger located right here. Just like so many other buildings on the map, we do have our the ability to enter into these buildings. And we have the ability to manipulate things. Again for the purpose of roleplay.
Right, and welcome to what's going to be one of the longest aspects of this map video and that is going to be our drive around a map tour because we just have so much land to cover in order to try to hit all of the cell points in the production areas and the various six farms that are on the map so here we have our biomass plant we have our unload and our wood cell trigger in and out of the facility doesn't look like it's too terrible bad but we do have those light poles that do have collisions on them that we're going to have to contend with we have our hospital right there fire trigger going on we have a cell point here at the restaurant I'm going to try to get to these various trigger areas in the town without getting too terrible loss. We have our base game carpentry production. Amazingly detailed. Amazingly detailed pounds. What is this? Oh no! Oh, we have to do a little, uh, what? A little road repair? Can we scoop that out? Is that, uh, loose gravel? I mean, that is just so cool. Seriously. Alright, so that wasn't gonna set anything else on fire, but you know what? I can't help it. That's burning. Oh my gosh, it takes burning. Someone's house is burning down, but it, oh no! Oh my gosh, their shed is burning! What are we gonna do? Oh my lord. Oh, it's 12 o'clock. We have church steeples. The church bells are ringing. How can you not like this map? We have our farmer's market cell point located right over there. This should be the bakery. And here we have our bakery set up as a cell point. This is where we started our whole career. On the map, we have a fuel point. Fuel point on fire. It's a sporting goods store. And another cell point. Neapolitan pizza. Then we have the fire station. That's where we went to activate the flooding of the town and we'll jump into in cab view and make our way over to the next playable form
just take a look at the land, the elevation changes, the foliage, trees. It's just, oh, the traffic is brutal. Traffic's always brutal. I don't really have any issues with the uh, the distance mountains either. Everything just looks good. Now, with respect to the buildings using the new texture technique, overall they are. Overall, these buildings are coming from the three various base game maps. We definitely have all of the base game ground textures. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at our build mode. Let's go to painting. See, we basically have all of the ground textures from all three base game maps. We take a look at our buildings. We do have some custom buildings available to us. And what's interesting about this is these buildings do not rotate freely. They rotate every 90 degrees. Pretty much every building is going to rotate that way. That is custom to the map. It's a little annoying with respect to being able to really kind of fine tune where you want to place things. We have a custom silage bunker. We have a silo, and then we have a salt silo. Road salt can be used to clear the road. So we have a silo here designed for road salt specifically. Might tell you that we're going to be getting a lot of snow on the map. We have a buying fill types silo. This is included with the map under containers. We have a lifting platform that we could put down, just like the one we saw at the vehicle shop. And then we have several farmhouses. So we have the, this old broken down farmhouse we saw up in the woods. We have the container farmhouse, which we're gonna take a look at right here on this farm. And then we have the Bavarian farmhouse that we're gonna be able to find on another playable farm. Under production, we do have custom production. We have fertilizer production. We have liquid fertilizer production. Composter. Mixed feed production. Plant production. Plant protection, so that's herbicide. Seed production. And pig food production. Are no custom, sorry, I was gonna say there's no custom cell points, but this is the farm store that we had up at our start farm spoke there we have no custom greenhouses orchards or generators we do have the ability to put down our custom animal barn for cows that is all of the custom items there and then there is nothing custom here other than under others and then we have some placeable pallets of just random products that are custom if we go to our vehicle shop Come down here to mods and DLCs. You see we have built into the map the red forklift that we saw over at the firehouse. So here we have another playable farm. And if we sell the buildings on this farm, this stays. Whatever this thing is, this we can't get rid of. And inside of this building here, there's lots of stuff. All of this stuff stays if you sell this building. So that's why I said with respect to the farms being customizable, they kind of are, but they also kind of are not. And to some degree, you may say this really isn't a farm because it has road salt. You could kind of say this is an area set up for maybe contract work or road crew work but we do have a farm silo here around back so that leads me to believe that this can very well easily be a kind of a, a player farm that is interested in just arable farming now over here we run into another issue where these triggers are just way too darn close so we have open wardrobe right you can do that we come over here we open the door and inside here is supposed to be our sleep trigger but there's just too many triggers in here all we have is turn on light 
right? We can't actually sleep because the triggers are just too close to each other. You may think, well, let's come out here to the outside. I can turn on the light again, but I don't get the ability to sleep. So that is going to impact our score again with respect to player triggers being clearly marked and interactive areas being clearly marked because while they are marked they are not necessarily usable in their current iteration let's go ahead and all oh, the traffic is fast on this map we're going 56 and we are just slowly starting to catch up to traffic I guess is the AI traffic is going about 50 around here, which is cool to see. Big 4X map like this, you are not going to want to be stuck behind slow traffic. You may have seen a fire icon back there that is going to allow you to basically activate a road accident that you can then role play with. Intricate interstate system. And we are getting up on So we want to get up on that at this point in time. Really, really nice sights. Now, when we were looking at the various fields, it looked like a lot of the fields were between one and two hectares. There was a few that were five, six and so hectares in size. So the fields aren't super large on the map. I think this map would play really good in multiplayer for some folks who are kind of looking to stretch their legs. They've got lots of fields to buy, lots of room to expand, lots of production to get into with 21 different production items built into the map let alone the production items that you can place on your own. I'm trying to get over here to this big production area. Also doing this in a little bit of an abbreviated fashion because we do have well, it is getting as you can kind of see it is getting a little late in the day I would like to get this video out in the morning for you guys the map's been released for a few days now and it's been a very very busy week for me at the personal level and we're just now finally getting around to being able to take a look at this map. Here we have our great processing facility. Standard base game, great processing facility. I don't think we need to go into a whole lot of detail on that. Then we have just places like this, just random decorative elements they don't necessarily have any immediate 
gameplay to them, but I mean you could with placeable sub points put something down and make these other kind of areas. Remember Elm Creek? With the um the cave system? Well guess what we have here. We have our own cave system. You can go down in there and explore. A little something weird going on with the water texture. It looks like we've got some black gold, some oil pouring down, but that's that's just water. Interesting texture problem or something going on. And then across the street from our cave system we have our sawmill we have our what is this floating in the wall sir oh, oh no the sawmill's on fire i thought that might be the log cell point but now that's a that the sawmill on fire Over what chip point? Our log cell trigger, our dump station, our interactive icon, spawn point for our plank pallets. I don't think we need to go up to the quarry. We did kind of see that already during the fly around. There we go. This is going to take us over to the big mega production area. This is something we definitely need to show off, talk about. So inside of here, we have a ton of production and this area is going to be purchased in one fail swoop. You're not going to be buying individual production areas here. Let's go up to the lands and you're going to be able to buy this whole area for $223,000. And when you buy it, you're going to get all of these productions. So here we have a farm silo. Base game farm silo, so we have our dump stations, our fill points. We have a slurry storage tank. Then we have a this is the we were getting the pop-up information but we're not getting the pop-up information so really we're gonna have to come over here and look so we have our farm silo a liquid manure tank we have then the liquid fertilizer production we have a stainless steel fertilizer tanker we have regular fertilizer production we have the composter mixed feed production pig feed production seed production and herbicide production this is the liquid fertilizer production. And we have the solid fertilizer production. Right, this is the mixed feed production, I believe. Pig food production. And again, this is this is where we're gonna be knocking a little bit on the map or interactive areas and and things being clearly marked because we're not getting that that additional info pop up down at the bottom so it is making it a little difficult for you to really understand what each and every aspect is that's where we're going to have to come here and click on these things 
really know what we are looking at. So this is the herbicide production. This is our composter, which we're going to dump all manner of inputs into. We're going to provide, I believe, also diesel fuel for this production, and then we're going to be able to get compost out, which is listed as silage. To the left, we're going to have another arable farm. So if we can't figure out how to get into this one. farm sign for this farm. This is going to be a kind of a large kind of maybe contractor yard type arable farm going on here. Lots of buildings. Lots of big buildings. Silo, so we have our dump station and our fill pipe. This should take us around to the next town that we're going to take a look at. So the trigger down there is going to be a train rental. We have a big ski lift. And here we are coming down into the town. This is a town that has all types of kind of production and construction going on. Oh, take a look at that nice mural on the wall. So here we have the dairy. This is the production dairy. And then we also have a milk cell point located right here. So we have the production trigger located over there. And then this is our sugar mill. So I was getting this map and the map that I looked at earlier today mixed up a little bit there. Another train rental over here. We have our animal dealer over here. We have our bakery over here. There's the animal dealer. the bakery, we have the paler, so 
we have our spinnery located here in town. Let's make our way down to another of the player farms. Down here right by field 180. It's 186, I believe. It's right there below the hill. the same dairy barn that we saw over at the other farm it has all of the triggers in the same spots all of the trigger deficiencies also in the same spots with respect to the animal bio trigger we have the same farm silo so we have our dump station and our fill pipe to the biogas plant. That's the thing with 4X maps, there is a lot of driving. And the fact that we are basically looking at four different maps Theoretically, we're looking at four maps worth of land mass. So this is the one megawatt biogas plant from Elm Creek. So I don't think we need to go into too much detail about all of the dump stations there. We have a silage bunker right here. We have our dump station for our flurry. Fill pipe for digestate should be right there, but maybe it's been relocated. The two digesters. Now, if it's been relocated, I'm not seeing it come up. sure where that is at and why it's not coming up now we're going to try to make our way down to the cluster of areas down in the southeast corner and that's where we're going to then kind of conclude this video. So we have another road construction. Click here and dig up the road. And then another fire over here, another accident. Oh no! I crunched her car into a tree. So let's talk about the final score here on the map. So we're going to get the map full point with respect to production. Lots of production items available on the map. That is definitely not a problem. We have a full point with respect to all the cell points, player, 
Animal area, outputs, factory outputs, all can be sold. Bring it a full point on that regard. A half a point with respect to the farms being customizable because there's just certain things on the farms or on some of these farms that we cannot sell. And that really is going to ultimately impact a player's ability to tweak it and make the map or make the farm their own. Buildings where appropriate are indeed using the new texture technique. There's a lot of buildings and there's a lot of custom buildings. And I think really we should give the map a full point on that regard because of the maps just really going above and beyond with respect to a lot of these cool little elements. Yes, they're gimmicks. Yes, we're going to acknowledge that for what they are. And when you're the first to do the gimmick, then you get noted. When you're the seventh to do the gimmick, then it just becomes a gimmick to get someone to use the map. But this is, we're gonna call this the first for FS22 and these cool little, you know, activate fire, accident, accidents, turn on sirens, flooding, right? It's all kind of neat. Now, with respect to player interactive triggers being clearly marked, that's really another spot where the map is going to take a bit of a hit on the points because they're not so well marked in some respects. We've seen where the animal buy trigger for the custom cow building is in a completely different area than where you have to be in order to buy the animals. We've seen some other areas where it's just the triggers aren't really lined up that well. The various farmhouses where you have two icons, they're too close to each other, you can't activate the wardrobe or you can't activate the sleep trigger because you can't get out of a trigger in order to properly get into the next trigger to then do that activation. So we're gonna give the map just a half a point with respect to triggers and things being clearly marked. So ultimately the map is gonna get a 4.0 out of five with respect to the total score let me know down in the comments below what you all think of this map i'm sure lots of folks are going to want to give it a full five and it deserves a five with respect to originality it deserves a five with respect to visuals the lay of the land the way the foliage is fields lay layouts the town areas the details on the map Sure, if we were rating the map on all of those points, this map would likely get a full five. But that's not how we rate the maps. We rate the maps based on FS22 gameplay characteristics. And in that standpoint, some of the gameplay characteristics are falling down a little bit, kind of as a result of a couple of those shortcomings for which I had previously outlined. So here we are at the pig farm. We have our medium greenhouse. We have hopefully some working silage bunkers. <sighs> no, we don't. So this is the second set of silage bunkers that I have walked into that do not have triggers. Bear with me. I'm going to jump over to this other biogas plant because I didn't actually look at that trigger. I just kind of said, here's your silage bunker. Right, where am I at? Okay. So we do have an actual silage trigger here. This is the only silage bunker on this map that actually has a silage trigger. As you see, it says compacting zero, chaff level zero. That's, this is a working silage bunker. This over here, these aren't, nothing. 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 
we should be getting the Chaff Zero Compacting Zero pop-up. Do have our Digestate there. We have our buy trigger there. Oh, I really like this cracked asphalt. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. We have our digester. We have our dump station for our slurry. We have basically a base game pig area going on here. So we have our slurry point. We have our food point. 270 pigs in this area. We have what could be a manure heap, although we're not getting that field that additional info popping up to tell us that that is the manure heap. When and out, activate the doors at the button. Just like that. Here we have the other farmhouse. We have our sleep trigger there. And hopefully we have a wardrobe trigger. Maybe in another room. Don't see any other rooms we can go into. All right, guys, so that is gonna do us. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of this particular map i think it's really cool i do hope that we see an update i hope we see an update soon to fix some of these issues that i have discovered and pointed out specifically the silage heaps and the triggers maybe separate them out a little bit so hopefully they are going to work out better for people who wish to play on this map if you've had a chance to play on the map itself, let me know down in the comments below if you have run into any other interesting shortcomings or issues with this map because, gosh darn, this map has so much potential going for it. As I do with every map, I want every map at the start to be a 5.0. But sadly, not every map can be a 5.0. And we're going to give this one a four. So until next time, happy farming.